Coming up now on 712 of Kadiana's Morning News, it is the day that it all takes place. All the rumbling, all the fighting, all the kumbaya. It's a mixture. We have these these panelist people that come in and join us. It's Winging It Wednesday. All right, Warren Cottle joining us. Stafford, I am. Hello, you are. Stafford Barnett checking in. Good morning. Hello. Carol Ross. Good morning. Okay, everybody's here. Chad, you ready for this? No. This is his first experience being in the room with all of you fine folks. And I'm very nervous. Are you nervous? <laughs> no, that's a, but yeah, I want everybody to think I am. Okay, did you hear about the rumors that there are fist fights during the commercial yes, breaks? Yes, that's why yes. I get he, nervous, because I'm, I'm a physical guy, and I don't want to have to, like... You're going to have to referee. He was smart enough to show up armed. He apparently got the memo. Well, see, get, there you go. That's yeah. right. <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gents, we have a lot of topics to try to get to this morning, and I really think that we, we should start off here, and that is, uh, it is a national day of mourning, um, and... You know, for many, I don't – some people obviously very much appreciated the things that George H.W. Bush did. Um, others, maybe not so much because, you know, when we share some of the different sound that we have from different politicians in our state and across the country, um, they shared a lot of, of different stories. Um, and it's a it's a fascinating life. Uh, he was a congressman, director of the CIA. The man was a World War II veteran. I mean, there's just so many dimensions to uh, President Bush. All right, so Stafford, why don't you get us started off this morning? What do you think? I mean, in terms of his life, the the you know a, a national day of mourning, et cetera. Um, so, so I, what a father he must have been to have uh, been able to raise his kids in a way that they wanted to emulate the life that that he uh, put together, and um, for that I'm 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 thankful, um, and I wish his family the best. Um, you know, he volunteered for our country. He survived being shot down. Uh, when when he did decide to go to war uh, in Iraq, he he did it in two to three days. I mean, I, I seem to remember that being very, very short. And I wish I wish we would have learned more lessons from that. You know, we've got Mattis talking about the fact that we need to be out of Afghanistan right now. You know, so um, I think that uh, he was a role model for a lot of people. I, I know there are a lot of people that disagree with politically, but. Um, I have a lot of respect for the man, and uh, I hope his family finds some comfort. All right. Warren, your thoughts, sir? You know, it, it, the long history of political famines on both sides. You know, uh, Barbara Bush was a direct descendant of Franklin Pierce, who was one wow. of the early presidents. Cause that was her name, Barbara Pierce. Oh, yeah, and, uh, that's right. You know, I, I'm not going to go into all the accolades and all that. What I find really amusing is that I listen to these people – I heard Rush Limbaugh yesterday trashing the mainstream media now for going back and saying what a St. George George H.W. Bush was and the civility he had, and we haven't had that since then, and on and on and on. And he said, you know, they must have amnesia. Mm -hmm. If you remember how they trashed him when he was in office and up one side and down the other and on. And so then Rush started talking about seeing Bob Dole going up there to the casket and being helped up and while he saluted the president and all that. And I'm thinking, you know, Rush, you got a short memory too, because I go back to the uh, 1988 when when he was in there. Well, up to the election, no, it was 90, it was in 92, whatever. He was trashing Bush up one side and down the other, talking about how he'd lied to the American people and read my lips, no new taxes. He sold out to the Republican. He just became a Democrat, and on and on and on. And then he got invited to the White House. And he got to sleep in the Lincoln bedroom. And all the president and his family could not have been more gracious <laughs> to me. And I got to do this, that, and that. And then after that, he would have Bush calling his, his radio program and all. And it would just, and, and to Russia's credit, he did go back and, and mention that later on about how he did that. But he also talked about Bob Dole. He said how Bob Dole is so out of touch with reality. He said, you want me to be Ronald Reagan? I'll be Ronald Reagan. Mr. Dole, that's the whole point. You don't even understand. He goes on all this stuff about how goofy Bob Dole was, and now both of them are saints. And so I said, Russ, you're no different than the rest of them. All right, Carol, what do you think? What are your thoughts about it? Well, he's slightly different. (laughs) (laughs) He he will tell on himself, too. But... uh, Really, because of the personal connection, my cousin, you know, my cousin was Secret Service agent in the last uh, four years of of, uh, 
of him being uh, vice president uh, with Reagan. And uh, in, in fact, I mean, he spoke very, very highly. He said, you know, they were the same way in private as they were in public. Very gracious people, obviously a, a great note writer. Apparently he wrote notes to everybody and wrote a very gracious note to Bill Clinton on his exit. Um, I think the big problem I always had with him was that he got snookered by the Democrats, and this happened to Reagan. He saw it happen to Reagan under with immigration when they said, oh, you just give us amnesty for these three million people who are here, and we'll give you more border security and whatever else you want, and it never happened. Uh, we, we gave amnesty to those people. It never happened. He saw that happen, and yet when he spoke at the convention and said, read my lips, no new taxes, he got snookered in the, ro- the old rope-a-dope by the Democrats. Okay, well, you know, you give us this tax increase, we're in dire straits economically, which we were not. Uh, and uh, he went along with it, and, of course, he never got the tax cuts, the spending cuts that were supposed to be part of the deal. So it's really, a, you know, I think that was the one major thing that really did taint his record because he had a stellar record of public service up until then. In my opinion, his service in the military and enlisting when he was the day he turned 18, striking out from a very privileged background in the up east, you know, where he could have done very well on Wall Street or wherever he chose and he goes to the wild west of the Texas oil field back in the 50s. I mean, 50s and 60s. That was that was crazy time in the 50s, especially. So um, he made his fortune there, and then got into public service in a, in a very big way. So I think we owe a debt of gratitude to this president. Always he he was he was very civil publicly, but every once in a while, um, you know, as things would come out that he he knew who his enemies were. <laughs> he definitely knew who his enemies were. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much uh, for that topic. I want to jump right into our next topic uh, before we uh, head uh, to this little break here. John Kennedy and the big decision. John Kennedy and the big decision. So some are saying they knew it all along. Others said he didn't do it because of poll numbers. Others say, okay, it it, it, it wasn't going to happen because people like him where he is. They like him in the Senate seat. And they don't want to chance anything wonky happening with that. All right, Warren, you get the first shot on this. Were you surprised by it? What you think about it? I was not really surprised by that decision. Uh, I was somewhat disappointed because I do think that he would have made a good governor. Uh, at least I don't think he could possibly have flip-flopped on what he was over the years where he was so opposed to the general uh, administration and the spendings and all that. And he did at least have an understanding of what we need to do as far as government spending and all that in this state. And that um, I, I was looking forward to him coming in and bringing that debate out to the public instead of sitting there like, like this governor and uh, Bobby Jindal, where they hide under the desk and, and uh, try to pass every kind of a fee increase in tax there is. That... Uh, so, you know, no, I wasn't surprised that, that he decided not to run. But I think it's going to be an interesting governor's race. And a lot of people said, well, the, these other people are not known. Well, the problem is John Bill Edwards is known. And that may be all it takes is just as it was the last time Edwin Edwards ran, you know, anybody but Edwards. No, no, that was the time he ran against uh, uh, Buddy Romer. That was the, that was the, big, the big slogan, mm-hmm. anybody but Edwards. Yeah. All right, Carol, weigh in on the issue, please. Well, I think it uh, it disappointed a lot of people, for sure. But I think most people who, look, we've seen this movie before with Vitter. When Vitter was, you know, on the road to inevitability, Vitter got beaten because of some things that were brought up by the trial attorneys. And the trial attorneys are still at play. The plaintiff bar is going to weigh in big time because the plaintiff bar is doing very well, as you just heard from your uh, previous guest. And they are going to weigh in heavily. Um, all you have to do is I, I went to Morgan City to give a little speech, and all you have to do is look billboard, 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 lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. You know they're they're about the only ones doing really well right now, and it's it set a, a, a terrible tone. And the governor has enabled a lot of that. And uh, the problem with Kennedy dropping out is that there were a lot of people who backed off and maybe would have jumped in a little earlier. Uh, but you could see this coming. I mean, why would he give up the best job in politics as United States Senate? Six years? You only have to run for re-election six years? You get to, you know, just bloviate up there and have a great time. And, of course, the media loves him because of his quips and all that. John would have come in with a, about a 10-point advantage, I think, because of the name recognition already that he would not have to buy. And I think uh, I think he would have done a heck of a job having served in state government for a long, long time, and as state treasurer, knowing where all the bones are buried, 
he could have done a really exceptional job. I am disappointed from that standpoint that he would have been a slam dunk. And I think other Republicans, he would have, the, the field would have been cleared for him to run and stop the Republicans fighting each other and cannibalizing each other just in time for Edwards to come in and say, I'm the guy you need because these guys are just, they're so flawed because listen to them. They talk about each other really that bad. You know, so uh, it it really opens it up. Um, it We're in for a, a bumpy uh, a bumpy one, huh? A bumpy couple a bumpy of years. Road. Not, yeah, a bumpy <laughs> couple of years. Fasten your seatbelt. Yeah. Did you want to jump in on something real quick? Yeah, I'd like to talk about the topic. Do, do it. Go for it. <laughs> uh, jo- oh, wait. Did I not give you your shot? I, that's okay. You you are Stafford. now. <laughs> Stafford. I am, I am so sorry. Look, I, I'm a redheaded stepchild here. I'm almost, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, know where I, I know where I am on the poll, okay? But I love you, man. Look, J- John Kennedy is just another politician on the who's who's list of people who can't beat Edwards. Uh, and you can, Scalise is on that list. Uh, and and so is uh, our uh, who's who's the the Yahoo up uh, Ralph Abraham. No, from from South Louisiana. I thought he was from New Iberia. Who uh, who you mean our in attorney on the, general? Yeah, our attorney general. Yeah, thank you. What's his name? <laughs> What's his name? Jeff, Jeff Landry. Landry. Sometimes I blank out on the oh, line. Okay. Welcome to the show. I just did. Just, I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, look, okay. the the contrary to, to, to what's being said by, by pundits and a lot of the people, uh, the state's in some pretty, in, in relatively healthy shape compared to where it was when, when Jindal uh, ran it into the ground. Uh, we've got a surplus for the first time. We've, we've had to raise taxes because we give so much of our tax money away to, to corporate interests. Um, so, I I think... Uh, Edwards is, is very, very tough to beat. And I think Republicans are seeing that and and they realize that whoever they put up, uh, either won't be able to afford to beat him, um, or won't be able to, to, to start the base up enough to beat him because, um, you know, with the expansion of Medicaid, we've added a ton of people to the, who've, who've got healthcare for the first time in their life. Uh, and contrary to what's being said by a lot of people, it's, it's working. Um, doctors are getting paid. Um, and so we've got a lot of positive things happening in the state. We've got the number one growth in the United States by, by wage in Lake Charles, uh, lowest employment in the United States in Lake Charles. We've seen a lot of investment along the I-10 corridor, just about everywhere except Lafayette. Um, so uh, I, I, good luck to any Republican that decides to run against them. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. You know what? Okay, so all the go- blame goes. You know how when you have to go to the doctor's office, you have to take those tests, and they don't allow you to eat or drink anything? So I'm sorry, you're not the redheaded stepchild. Bernie, I'm I, okay with it. Could okay. I say one quick thing? Sure. Of course the state is doing well. They've raised about $7 billion in new taxes in the past two years. Yes, the state is doing well. The people of the state are not doing well. Warren, you, you got that face. The government is doing well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stafford, do you have a, a, a No, I mean, it's, look, it's it's. I, I don't have anything to follow up with that. I mean, other than people have a narrative to sell, and the numbers just dispute it, so... All right, one quick call here on Winging It Wednesday, uh, and we will head into the break and come back with some more topics on the way. Hi, you're on the show. Can you weigh in? Do you wish to? Good morning. Hi, good morning. Did you have something for us this morning? Well, I just am so disappointed to hear people, those two gentlemen, speaking so poorly about other uh, officials in the state. It's just discouraging. I wouldn't vote for either one of them or anyone that they support. Y'all have a good day. All right. Thank you so much for your call. All right. Coming up now on 726. Acadiana's Morning News. Winging a Wednesday. It is your show. We're going to talk about all kinds of fun things now. Not that the other segments weren't fun because they were. I mean, I already forgot Stafford once, and he's crying, and I made him cry, and I feel bad about it. In fact, I cry really easy. I know, right? Never. (laughs) All right, so our panelists are Warren Cottle and Stafford Barnett and Carol Ross. So (laughs) let's get into uh, another topic. By the way, LABI, the sponsor of Winging It Wednesdays every Wednesday right here on KPL, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. All right. Next topic, because I know this is going to start some discussion. Here's the phone line number, too. 232-1542. It's 232-1542. If you want to get in on the discussion this morning, just remember the minute you hear the phone ringing, you want to put your turn your radio down. Otherwise, you get a weird feedback, and you hear yourself, and it gets weird. So, But if you want to be part of this tax discussion, that's the number to call. All right, so 
Saturday is a big day for Lafayette Parish. Other parishes, too. They've got other issues. Um, one of the issues that is uh, really gained a lot of traction, especially in the last couple of weeks with more signs out there, more discussion going on, is about the tax issue concerning uh, the half-penny sales tax that would be parish-wide for Lafayette Parish for law enforcement. So I hear opinions all over the map when I talk to people about this. I did finally start seeing some yard signs for those who are in support of this. So what do the panelists really think? We have, we've gone into these issues. We've delved into it. But I want to know. It's right before election time. So, Warren, you get to go first here. I want to know what you think. What, which way are you going to vote and why? Well, I've already voted. And um, um, as far as the sheriff tax goes, I think that tax is probably going to go down because that uh, there's just too much opposition against it. You know, when you have all this, it's, it's, a, it's billed as a law enforcement tax. But then when you turn around and you look at every law enforcement community in this parish, other than the sheriff's office, has come out against it. You know, and, and the Lafayette police have, have really mounted an effort against it. And so, you know, that um, and, and the sheriff, has, has, I think he's done, a, he's done a good job. But on the other hand, this tax deal, it's kind of uh, all over the board on it. One, one day, well, this is why we're doing it. Next day, well, not doing it for that reason. We're doing it for this reason, whatever. And so, you know, the, I just don't think it's been a really good sale. And it, it, we're in an anti-tax environment right now, and I just think it's going to be tough to tough to get over. As far as the other one, the fire protection deal. Uh, oh, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. We'll get to that one All next, right. I promise. And you get to weigh in on that one as much as you want to. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Miss Carol, what do you think? And uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion, mm-hmm. one, on the Ross Carol report. is for mm-hmm. that tax. Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, typically I would be in favor of law enforcement receiving more money. But when you drill down into the numbers on this one and the fact that it is in perpetuity. Now, I know the sheriff's upset that I've said that, but... I didn't put that in the ballot. He did. It's on the ballot. And so, and, and the latest check with the Lafayette Parish uh, s- school system, the school uh, tax collector, mm-hmm. right, ha- actually projects now, they were saying it would, be, it would collect $25 million. Uh, It's up to $25.7 million that is, a half cent is producing now in Lafayette Parish and probably will continue to go up. That is too much money to take out of the private sector after the $7 billion the state has sucked out of the private sector and most areas of the state are struggling. I mean, we are, we are actually in better shape here in Lafayette than a lot of other areas, trust me. Now, I know Lake Charles is an outlier because of all the, the chemical sure. plants and that sort of thing. So you really can't even factor that in. Um, I, get, I get information from all over the state. just came from Morgan City. People are struggling. And so this half cent in Lafayette Parish, while it, it might have, you know, you might have supported it except for some of the things that, I, you know, I have no quarrel with the way the sheriff runs law enforcement. But I think coming after a half cent sales tax right now at this point in time, so early in his term as sheriff, I understand that, that I've seen his presentation several times. He's worried about that building on Willow Street. He continually blames his predecessor for putting them in debt. But they sold bonds for that, and they've been paying off the bonds on, on a regular basis over time. He wants to pay off the unfunded accrued liability in his pension system. Chad can tell you that almost never happens with government. Nobody is ever fully solvent in their unfunded liability in the pension system. So, you know, as long as you pay into it on a regular basis, nobody, your people aren't going to retire all at the same time. It's too much. And, by the way, Warren, some of the smaller municipality chiefs did come out for it because they think they're going to get some money out of it. And some of them are running for other office, and they want the sheriff's support. So uh, I, I simply think that this is the wrong tax at the wrong time. All right, Stafford, your turn. What do you think, sir? So I, I want to point out a, a bunch of stuff. And, and Carol was right that Warren was wrong about other police not supporting it. So the only people not supporting it from a police standpoint is the Lafayette City Police Union. Uh, the Lafayette Police Chief hasn't come out and said anything about it. He is it. today. Uh, okay. Breaking news on the Ross Report today. Cool. Uh, so <clears throat> Carol can't make up her mind about how she wants the city to raise taxes or fund itself. Uh, earlier this year, when the complex downtown was coming up for a uh, millage renewal, she said that that should go away. It Why don't you stick to what you tax. believe, Stafford, and stop quoting me? But, but because I want to point out your hypocrisy, Carol. 
So you, you, you play both sides, and the reality is you're just against everything. Oh, you've, been against, you've been against libraries, you've been against schools, and now you're against jails, which will, which will be one suffering the consequences for, for not funding libraries and schools. So oh my Lord. crime's not going to go away. Crime's going to be here in perpetuity. Uh, and, this is, and, and what you're also leaving out is that it's lowering taxes in the unincorporated parts of the parish, and it's going to lower property taxes across the board. Uh, there's a sunset clause inside of there. So, as, as usual, we get these half-truths uh, and these inconsistencies from you trying to shoot this down, when in reality, it's a good plan. It would add offers to the, offers to the streets. And when we talk about fiscal responsibility, if the sheriff goes and shuts down two floors of the jail downtown, the city is still liable, the parish is still liable to hold those inmates. That's 320 inmates. The federal dollars per day... That 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 we, that are agreed to across the United States are twenty four dollars and fifty cents per day per inmate. The repair still has the responsibility to house to take care of those inmates. So if they send them off somewhere, the sheriff isn't on the hook for that money. Lafayette Parish is on the hook for that money, not Lafayette City, Lafayette Parish. So the reality is, is that there's a lot of inf- stuff going on here, and there's a lot of bad information going out there, and there's a lot of inconsistencies. All right, Warren, you were raising your hand. Go for it, yeah, sir. First of all, it's a really, a, really a bad assumption, I think, to say when somebody is opposed to a tax increase, then they're opposed to libraries, they're opposed to law enforcement and Thank all you. this, that, and other. Uh, as far as the number of inmates and all this stuff, let's just have less inmates. Let's have fewer of them. And, and that, uh, you know, what the sheriff can do, if, if you're talking about federal money coming in here to house the inmates and all, then hell, let's go out there and let's arrest all kinds of people. <laughs> You know, which we're already doing. Economic development. And uh, my point is, you know, that, w- uh, and which Stafford, you have agreed with this before, too. We need less prisoners. I we need that. less prisoners. And, and that, you know, the more money you beef into law enforcement, their commodity is people. Right. That is their commodity. And so you're just going to keep getting more and more and more of the same. Wherever you put your money, you're going to get more of it. All right, let's go to the phone lines first, and then we'll continue our discussion with our panelists. Hi, you're on the Wing It Wednesday show. Tell us what you're thinking. Well, I think that Stafford needs to, as Warren said, not think that people that are opposed to taxes or opposed to libraries or law enforcement, you're just opposed to the way the people who are asking for the taxes are going to spend that money on libraries and law enforcement. So I think he needs to be real careful about disparaging people's motives just because they're against something that he's for. Okay, thank you, Carol. Uh, well, <laughs> so, so you can be a you're opposed to you're not opposed to a tax. You're just opposed where they're going to spend it. Well, that's l- illogical. Uh, may I support what she's saying? Because the library had three millages. There is no other entity in this parish that had three millages. They used the millages and they built the buildings. That was why we had that additional mill- millage. All the buildings are built. They now have two millages. They can perfectly function with the two millages they have. That's number one. Number two, on this particular tax, the sheriff has continually complained about that building on Willow Street, yet he just bought a building downtown. Now, it's a lease purchase, so it's not going to show up anywhere for a year. It's leased for a year, and he's buying it. Yes, 303 West Vermilion. You can check it out. It is a fact. So while he's complaining that he doesn't have enough money, he is continually spending additional money on things that – he wants, and don't add to law enforcement. By the way, the jail, courthouse complex, one millage, correctional detentional facility, another millage, both of those, because of the money that gets shifted to the jail from the courthouse complex, the, the jail is operating, I guess, about $8 million, $9 million that they get annually in a property tax millage. The sheriff himself, just from property taxes, gets about $38 million. It's almost doubled over 10 years and continues to go up. And he gets that half cent sales tax, and he gets funding and grants, and he gets money from the school system for the school resource officer, and you know, on and on. So he's not all by himself. Uh, there's about a 64 million. Do you want this sheriff in Lafayette Parish to have access to your money in perpetuity that will pump up his budget to almost 90 million dollars? That's the question people have to ask themselves. All right, Warren, you wanted to jump in a second ago following that woman's telephone call. What? No, what, I was wanting you to turn it up so I could hear it. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I apologize. Yeah. You know what I'm going to get you for Christmas? It's already on my Christmas list. I'm getting all of you a, pair of, a new pair of headphones because we had some, but then <laughs> they broke. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was all my fault. 
Because, uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm going to get you that for Christmas. Good. Thank okay. you. Are you excited? No, I'm not. I mean, okay. no. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> the other gift, though, so is a everything. big surprise, yeah. and Santa's working on it. Well, okay? you see, I, ha- I have hearing aids, and so if I have headphones, then i got to pull them off, put them on, put them off, put them on, and all that stuff. So anyway, just, you know. Well, we're going to work on something well, then. Well, you have, you have a volume control button. I do. Over. All you got to do is turn it up sometimes. But that's okay. I'm not telling you how to do your job. Oh, that's okay. I know. But it's all right. I love you. But at least you did so, get us two microphones in here, so staff and I don't have to share one anymore. Thank I, you. I, I enjoy getting okay. close, Warren. I don't, I don't, I don't get the so, credit. Okay, the credit for that totally goes to Rob and Mike, our heroes. Thank you, you think dudes. it goes to Mike because I saw him out there one day and told him <laughs> uh-huh. he needed to go hock that camel hair overcoat he had on and buy us another microphone in here oh, and he said Lord. what do you mean oh, you don't Lord. have another microphone no we don't okay that's hilarious <laughs> stafford so 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 earlier this year and, and you probably noticed it around town that the sheriff was forced to cut um some of the grass cutting services that they were doing at, at the medians that type of stuff that they were doing for very low cost to the city um and there's a list of things that he's going to have to cut as well um that if if this tax doesn't pass and one of the things that that we are very good at in this community, and, and and it's it's important because when we talk about gun crime, we we said that it's not gun crime, but it's a mental health issue. Um, the the Lafayette Parish Sheriff's Office and Jail uh, tackles mental health. I'm not going to say they tackle it uh, to a point that that it's good, but they do it better than everybody else. Um, and they're an example for others. And they're and the way that they police and the way that they train. Um, is something that's that's emulated uh, throughout, and and one of the things that, that keeps getting, and it wasn't thrown out today, so I'm not saying anybody threw it out today, but they keep talking about the budget in in, in East Baton Rouge, and East Baton Rouge is around 90 million dollars. Uh, they also had to go borrow 30 million dollars to make their the ends meet. So the, the reality is their budget's close to 120 million dollars, um, and that's not who we want to be. If you look at the crime that's there, and you look at what's happened, the, the dangers to police officers there, and the things that have happened in Baton Rouge. Uh, and, and when you think about how close that is, for that to happen there and for us to not happen here, not not have it here, I think is a testament to not just the sheriff's office, but to but to law enforcement. And one of the problems that the sheriff has is uh, is losing officers to other places because we just can't pay them enough. There's not enough money to pay them. So uh, I I think that uh, the sheriff's doing a great job. I think that this money is going to go to 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 supporting something. And I was, I've said before, I'll say it again. Um, if you don't support this tax, take that back, the blue sticker off your car. All right, guys, it is coming up now on 744. We continue with our Wing In It Wednesday show coming up. We're going to fit in two more topics. Yes, I know it's crazy. We're going to do it before the end of the hour, though. Coming up now on 744, I want to talk with you a little bit about where you can get a great vehicle. Look, let me tell you, Louisiana's number one Chevy dealer for four years in a row, Service Chevrolet. It says it right in the name, Service. They're always looking to work on a deal with you, get you that truck that you want. They do parts and service. They've got a body shop, a collision center. Look, if you want to get a great vehicle, go to Service Chevrolet. They have a huge selection. Look, when you're going in the direction of Ambassador Caffrey, near its intersection with Bertrand, you got to go. 1212 Ambassador Caffrey right there. Because you're going to go, because right next door is the wash, so you're going to make your vehicle sparkle anyway. Go into the service Chevrolet Playland. It is time for a new truck. Go to service Chevrolet. You'll be so happy you did. All right, KPL News Time, 749, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry, LABI, the sponsors of Winging It Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday morning, and, of course, phone lines are open, 232-1542. we got to move on to the next topic. We're going to talk charter. The Fix the Charter people are for a yes vote this weekend. There are some that oppose the issue, saying there are too many questions that remain with the proposed changes. Our three panelists are going to weigh in on this issue because the vote is coming up Saturday. We'll have a special eight to nine with our friends, Andy uh, Bear and uh, Kevin Blanchard, who joined us a couple weeks back to share their perspectives, their thoughts. We'll air that eight to nine uh, during our up close segment this Saturday morning. So you can catch that yesterday. Uh, we heard from Douglas Straps and Joey Durrell, who co-wrote a letter uh, yesterday saying their reasons for why they see that this is the right thing to do 
for this fix the charter amendment, why they vote yes. So, all right, down to discussion. I think we're going to start with Carol this time. It's her turn. Carol, what do you think on this issue? Well, I I do think uh, we need to fix the charter, but this isn't the fix we need. And unfortunately, I think it's going to create more problems than it fixes uh, simply because, you know, you look at human nature. You're going to you're going to create two separate bodies, two separate bodies. Uh, this is certainly different from other proposals that have been uh, put forth to to fix the charter. I think there is a way to fix the charter without going to this drastic step. And the reason I say that is because, I mean, if you look at human nature and politicians and political elected bodies don't usually stay inside the lines. Right. They always want to bring more power to themselves. If there is a is the let's say a hot issue and these two councils start going at each other, we still have the problem of the mayor president. They haven't fixed that. And they keep saying, well, I suspect that uh, the next step will be to separate the mayor and the parish president. Well, I don't suspect anything. I want to see it in writing. And I see a lot of things in these amendments and the way this whole thing was done, written behind closed doors by just a few people, not a lot of transparency there. And now even the mayor president has come out against it for some very good reasons. I think people are looking at it from one perspective or the other, like it's going to be fair and it's going to fix everything, and it's not. Uh, Remember, the cities are still within the parish, last time I checked. And so when there are, you know, multiple people, and when, look, I think that there are too many questions about it. When in doubt, leave it out. Let's come back to the drawing board. Let's get more people involved. As I've said many times, we have more transparency and more research on the horse farm and the design of the horse farm than we have had on this. And many people are confused. Based on my emails, hardly anybody really understands what's in this thing. All right, Stafford, you are up next. What do you think, sir? So you point out that, that Dudley Lestraps and Joey Durrell uh, came out in support of this. Um, if you want to hear Carol come out in support of it, we've got a recording of her in 2013 and 2015 saying that this is the system that she proposed. There was never a proposal to so, split into two councils. Okay. I have always supposed I'll, I'll, that. I'll try to make a point without getting interrupted this time. Well, try uh, to tell the truth. So, no, I am telling the truth. Um, and, and you just lied again about closed doors and no transparency. It's the same hypocrisy I keep pointing out. There was multiple town halls, multiple opportunities for input. We've been talking about this problem for a decade. And one of the things that came up in the town hall that was that was that was turned around was the fact that the original piece put together didn't include the current uh, term limits for people who had been there. And the people who had put this together listened during the conversations that everybody's been having and and changed that. So that just proves that what you keep saying, what you keep repeating on your show is, is more BS. Um, <laughs> and the current mayor came out and supported this for a very important reason. This s- charter makes the, the, the sale of the management of LUS impossible without a vote of the people. There's a reason he's come out against it, and, and beca- because he wants to give away our our pride, the thing that we built in this community. We, we built our U.S. because nobody would, would put power in Lafayette. Nobody would, no major companies would come here and, and give us running water, uh, high-speed Internet. And so we did it ourselves, and it changed the, the future of our community. It's allowed us to grow at a pace faster than our surrounding community. So uh, I support this. There's no reason that a citizen of Lafayette shouldn't have equal representation to the citizens of Karen Crow, Scott, Youngsville, or Broussard. It's time for people to get it right. All right, Warren, you are up next. Give us your thoughts, sir. Well, I've said just over and over and over and over again is that this thing does not fix the problem. You know, you need to identify what the problem is before you start offering a solution to it. And the problem that this thing is supposed to address is the fact that that Lafayette does not have an autonomous uh, people voting just in, that live inside the city of Lafayette, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that... The big problem is basically is the money. We keep hearing it go back all over, all the time, all the time, all the time. So that's the problem that we really have, and that's what we really need to be trying to fix. And this thing does not solve any of that. And they keep wanting to beat around the bush about, well, should we go back to two councils? Should we have this? Should we have this? Well, Lafayette's being unfairly treated and this and that. Where the hell was Lafayette when all of this stuff was going down? When the consolidation came along, and then all at once these other cities are out there annexing everything in Lafayette Parish that they could annex, and the city of Lafayette sat, sat totally quiet and dormant mm-hmm. and never said a word up to just a couple of years or so ago. And they want to come back and offer a solution 
to a partial problem. It's like trying to fix the U.S. tax code. <laughs> they just keep coming in there. Well, if we just tinker with this a little bit, then we tell everybody we we fix the problem. And if you're going to fix it, then by God, fix it. And okay. nobody wants to do that. All right, very good. We have about 30 seconds left. Real quick, let's wrap this up, guys. It's not a fix. Okay. Any final comments? Uh, it, yeah, we've heard that for 10 hours a day for quite some time. Uh, look, the, the mm-hmm. people who are, who, are, who are working on this have run a very positive campaign. Uh, facts are facts. Uh, and, and, what we, and even Terrio admitted the concern, concerned citizens for good government uh, that he spends more time on Lafayette City issues than he does on parish issues. The parish needs to start fixing itself, and the only way they can do that is with the parish uh, council. All right. It is up on the ballot on December 8th, which is this Saturday. You must go, go out and vote. You have to, have to, have to. Ladies and gents, thank you all so very much today. Thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. that. Stafford Barnett, Warren Cottle, and Carol Ross swinging it Wednesday, brought to you by LABI. It is coming up now on 757. On the way this morning, we've got a little bit of your Fox Business report. We've got Fox News at the top of the hour. More interviews to come. More local news also on the way. Sunny and cooler today. Dave Baker says a high at 58. Clear and cold tonight. Very chilly. An overnight low at 38. Weather brought to you by Chris Quibito with Satera Advisors. Your money deserves a strategy. Let Chris help you retire a better way. Visit retireabetterway.com. You can download his free ebook. Coming up now on 8 a.m., Fox Biz and Fox News. Coming up.